The Unexpected Guest by Agatha Christie. Hello? Is anyone there? <laughs> I'm so sorry, it's this confounded fog. I've just run my car off the road into a ditch. I haven't the faintest idea where I am. I must have run off the main road somewhere. I've been driving round these topsy turvy lanes for an hour or more. Are you asleep? Good God. He's dead. Yes. You know? Yes. He's been shot through the head. Who? You shot him? Yes. The telephone is on the desk. Telephone? If you want to ring up the police. A few minutes one way or the other won't make any difference. They'll have a bit of a job getting here in this fog anyway. I'd like to know a little more. Who is he? My husband. His name is... was... Richard Warwick. I'm Laura Warwick. I see. Well, hadn't you better sit down? Can I get you a drink? It must have been a shock. Shooting my husband? I should imagine so, yes. Or was it just fun and games? It was fun and games. But I would like that drink. Right. Now then... Suppose you tell me all about it. Hadn't you better ring the police? All in good time. Nothing wrong with having a cosy little chat first, is there? I don't... Who are you? How, how did you happen to come here tonight? My name is Michael Starkweather. I'm an engineer. My mother's family came from this part of the world. I thought I might buy a little house. The last two hours, ooh, nearer three, I should think, I've been hopelessly lost... Driving round all the twisted lanes in South Wales, ended up in a ditch. Thick fog everywhere. Found a gate, groped my way to this house, tried the handle of the window, it wasn't locked, so I walked in. Whereupon I find... The door opens and the unexpected guest comes in. That saying always frightened me when I was a child. Unexpected guest. Why don't you ring up the police and get it over? Not yet. Why did you shoot him? What do you expect me to say? He drank. He was cruel. I've hated him for years. It's a bit drastic, don't you think? You say you've hated him for years. Why didn't you leave him? Surely that would have been much simpler. I've no money of my own. My dear girl, if you could prove cruelty and habitual drunkenness and all the rest of it, you could get a divorce or separation. Then you get alimony or whatever it is they call it. Have you got children? No. No, thank God. Well, then, why didn't you leave him? Well, you see... Well, now I shall inherit all his money. Oh, no, you won't. The law won't allow you to profit as a result of a crime. Or did you think of that? What did you think? I don't know what you mean. You're not a stupid woman. Suppose I hadn't come knocking at the window just now. What were you going to do? Does it matter? Perhaps not. I'm interested. What was your story going to be if I hadn't come barging in and caught you here red-handed? Accident? Suicide? It doesn't matter, I tell you. I'm prepared for the worst. Just because I came in through that window? If I had... But you did! Yes. I did. So you're for it. Now, let's go back a little. You've hated your husband for a long time, and tonight he said something that just pushed you over the edge. You snatched up the gun that was lying beside it. Why was he sitting here with a gun beside him, anyway? It's hardly usual. That. He used to shoot at cats. Cats? Richard used to be well known as a big game hunter. Oh. That was where we first met in Kenya. Here, let me... Oh. Thank you. We married soon after. Then, two years later, he had a terrible accident. He was mauled by a lion. He was lucky to escape alive. But he's been a semi-cripple ever since, unable to walk properly. Mm. 
very same misfortune improves your character. It didn't improve his. Instead, it developed all his bad points. Vindictiveness, a streak of sadism, drinking too much. He made life pretty impossible for everyone in this house, and we all put up with it because... Well, you know what one says. So sad for poor Richard being an invalid. All his life, shooting had been the thing he liked doing best. So every night after we went up to bed, he'd sit there, and Angel, his valet, would bring the brandy and one of his guns and put them beside him. Then he'd have this window wide open, and he'd sit here looking out, watching for the gleam of a cat's eyes, or a stray rabbit, or a dog. He seems to have had a rather perverted sense of humour. Pretty frightening to live with, I should think. He was. Look, must we go on? Can't you realise that you have got to ring up the police? That it would be far kinder to do it now. How much courage have you got? Can you lie, if necessary? And lie convincingly? You're crazy. Probably. You don't know what you're doing. I know very well what I'm doing. I'm making myself an accessory after the fact. But why? Wh why? For the simple reason, I suppose, that you're an attractive woman. I don't like to think of an attractive woman being shut up in prison for the best years of her life. Everything I've told you may have been lies. It may. Maybe I'm a sucker. But I'm believing you. Now, who exactly is there in this house? Uh, there's Richard's mother and there's Benny. Hmm? Uh, Miss Bennett. She's a kind of combined housekeeper and secretary. Ah. An ex-hospital nurse. She's been here for ages. She's devoted to Richard. And then there's Angel. He's a male nurse attendant and valet and looks after Richard. Oh, and there's Jan. Who's Jan? He's Richard's young half-brother. He lives with us. He's very affectionate and sweet, but... Well, he isn't quite like other people. I, I mean, he's what they call retarded. But you're fond of him, aren't you? Yes, I'm very fond of him. That's really why I couldn't go away and leave Richard, because of Jan. Richard, you see, would have had him sent to an institution. I see. How is it that nobody heard the shot tonight? Oh, um, Richard's mother's deaf. Benny's room is over on the other side of the house. Angel's quarters are shut off by a bay's door. Uh, there's Jan, of course. He sleeps in the room over this, but, uh, well, he goes to bed early and he sleeps very heavily. That all seems extremely fortunate. But what are you suggesting? That we could make it look like suicide? No. No, there's no mark of scorching on his temple. The gun must have been fired from a certain distance away. So suicide's out. And it obviously wasn't an accident. That leaves murder. Plain murder. Tell me, did Richard have any enemies? Enemies? Yeah, how about someone from his tiger and lion shooting days? Um, I, ca I can't think. Oh, come on, you've told me the kind of man your husband was. There must have been incidents, people, uh, someone who made threats, justifiable threats, perhaps? There was a man whose child Richard ran over. When was this? About two years ago, when we were living in Norfolk. Ah. Now, Richard was driving back from Cromer, drunk. He went through a little village at about 60 miles an hour, zigzagging. The child ran out into the road from the inn there. Uh, Richard knocked him down, and he was killed instantly. Your husband could drive a car? Yes, he could. It had to be specially built with special controls. Oh. What happened about the child? Didn't they get Richard for manslaughter? Uh, there was an inquest, of course. Richard was exonerated completely. But weren't there any witnesses? There was the child's father. He saw it happen. And a hospital nurse, Nurse Warburton, was in the car with Richard. Now, according to her, the car was going under 30 miles an hour and Richard had had only one glass of sherry. She said that the accident was quite unavoidable. They believed her and not the child's father. You see, anyone would believe Nurse Warburton. She seemed the very essence of reliability and accuracy and careful understatement. Mm. You weren't in the car? No. Then how do you know she was lying? Oh, the whole thing was very freely discussed by Richard. After they came back from the inquest, he said, Bravo, Warby, jolly good show. You've probably got me off quite a long jail sentence. And she said... You don't deserve it, Mr Warwick. You know you were driving much too fast. It's a shame about that poor child. And then Richard said, Oh, forget it. What's one brat more or less in this overcrowded world? The more I hear about your husband, 
the more I'm willing to believe that what happened tonight was justifiable homicide rather than murder. Now then, the child's father, is he still living in Norfolk? Um, uh, no, no, he was only over here for a visit to his uh, wife's relations, I think. He uh, came from Canada. Canada? Well, that's a nice long way away. It would take time to chase up. I think, yes, I think there are possibilities there. Got any newspapers about it? Newspapers? Uh-huh. Uh, there are some old ones in the cupboard here, kept for fires. Uh, here. Fine. Just what we want. What are you going to do? Manufacture evidence. S but suppose the police find this man. If he still lives in Canada, it'll take a bit of doing. And by the time they do find him, he'll have an alibi all right. I don't like it. My dear girl, you can't afford to be choosy. Now, what was the man's name? Uh, Mac something. Uh -huh. McLeod, McRae. I can't remember. Well, if you can't remember, you can't. We shall have to manage with that. You don't remember the date or anything useful like that? Oh, I can tell you the date. It was May the 15th. How on earth can you remember that? Because it happened on my birthday. Ah, I see. Yes, well, that solves one little problem. Ah, at any rate, we've got one piece of luck. This paper is dated the 15th. Mm -hmm. uh, November the 15th. Yes, but it's the numbers that are awkward. Capital M. Now an A and a Y. What are you doing? Have you got any paste? On the desk. How to be a criminal in one easy lesson. And here's a plain block of writing paper, the kind sold all over England. Now, watch this. May 15, paid in full. I stick the letters on the paper. Ugh, tricky with gloves. And then tuck it neatly into the jacket pocket. So... Oh, give it to me. Give it to me, please. It's my lighter. All right, it's your lighter. There's nothing to get upset about. You're not losing your nerve, are you? No, no. I, I just can't think. You don't have to think. You've just got to obey orders. <laughs> now, have you got a furnace of any kind in the house? Um, there's the hot water boiler. Good. Now, the first thing you do is to go into the kitchen and put the rest of this newspaper in the boiler. Then you go upstairs, get out of your clothes and into a dressing gown or, or negligee or, or what have you. Have you got any aspirin? Yes. Right. Well, empty the bottle down the loo, then go along to someone, your mother-in-law or Miss Bennett, mm -hmm. and say you've got a headache and want some aspirin. Then, while you're with whoever it is, leave the door open, by the way, you'll hear the shot. The shot? Yes, I'll attend to that. Now, when you hear it, register alarm and bring Miss Bennett and anyone else you can collect down here. Your story is that you don't know anything. You went to bed, you woke up with a violent headache, you went along for aspirin, and that is all you know. Understand? Yes. Then go along and do your stuff. You... You oughtn't to do this. You shouldn't get involved. Now, don't let's have any of that. Everyone has their own form of... What do we call it just now? Fun and games? Can you do what I've told you? Yes. Right. Oh, good. You've got a watch. What time do you make it? Um, just after ten to twelve. Right. I'll allow you three... No... Four minutes. Four minutes to go along to the kitchen, pop that in the boiler, go upstairs, out of your things, and along to Miss Bennett. Do you think you can do that? Laura? Yes. Now then, at five minutes to midnight exactly, you'll hear the shot. Off you go. You're not going to let me down, are you? No. Sergeant Cadwallader, season of mists and mellow fruitfulness, close bosom friend of the maturing sun. What? Keats? Oh, really? Oh, you'd hardly credit the fine day it is when you think of the terrible time we had getting here last night. Worst fog I've known in years. No wonder the accidents piled up the way they did on the Cardiff Road. Have the fingerprint boys finished their job yet? Oh, yes, yes, sir. I've uh, got them all ready here for you. Oh. No trouble from the household about taking their prints? No oh, trouble, whatever. Most obliging they were. Anxious to help, as you might say. All right, now let's see. Mr. Warwick, that's the deceased. Mrs. Laura Warwick, Mrs. Warwick Sr., young Jan Warwick, Miss Bennett, and, uh, who's this, Angle? No, uh, Angel, sir. Oh, Angel. Oh, yes, yes. That's the uh, male nurse attendant, isn't it? Yes, sir. And two other sets. Hmm. Well, one will be, uh... Michael Starkwedder's. He gave Mrs. Warwick brandy and he carried the gun in from the garden. Mm, Mr. Starkwedder. Oh, 
You don't like him? Well, what's he doing here? That's what I'd like to know. Running his car in a ditch and coming up to a house where there's been a murder done. Oh, you nearly ran our car into the ditch last night coming up to a house where there'd been a murder done. Yes, well, that's different. And as to what he's doing, he's been here for the last week looking round for a small house or cottage. Mm. Ah, seems he had a Welsh grandmother. Used to come up here for holidays when he was a boy. Oh, well, now, if he had a Welsh grandmother, that's a different matter, isn't it? Oh. Yes, we uh, ought to get the report on him from Abadan any moment. Now, about this second set of unidentified prints. A print of a man's hand flat on the table by the body and blurred impressions on the outside and inside of the French windows. Well, McGregor? Yeah, could be. But they weren't on the revolver. Well, you'd say any man would have sense enough to wear gloves. An unbalanced fellow like McGregor wouldn't think of a thing like that. I wonder... Oh, well, it could have been a guest in the house. Well, I understand from Mrs. Warwick there were no visitors to the house yesterday. Hmm. That uh, manservant might tell us more. Ask him to come in. Huh? Yes, sir. Yeah, Henry Angel. Henry Angel? Yes, sir. Sit down, will you? Oh, thank you. Now then, you've been uh, nurse attendant and uh, valet to Mr. Richard Warwick for how long? Three and a half years, sir. Yeah. You like the job? I find it quite satisfactory, sir. What was Mr. Warwick like to work for? Difficult. But there were advantages? Yes, sir. I was extremely well paid. Ah, which made up for other disadvantages. Eh? Yes, sir. I am trying to accumulate a little nest egg. Ah, I see. Oh, what's all this about guns and revolvers and shooting at animals? It was Mr. Warwick's hobby, sir. What we call in the profession a compensation. Huh? He'd been what they term a big game hunter, I understand. What was the good of his having a gun last night with that fog? It was just a habit, sir. He was used to it, as you might say. When did uh, you last see him? About a quarter to ten, sir. He had brandy and a glass by his side and the pistol of his choice. I arranged the rug for him and wished him good night. Ah, didn't he go to bed? He always slept in his chair. At six in the morning, I would bring him tea, and then I would wheel him into his bedroom for a bath, and a shave, and so on. Uh, he then usually slept until lunchtime. He was rather an eccentric gentleman. Mm -hmm. And uh, this window was shut when you left him? Yes, sir. There was a lot of fog about. Was it locked? No, sir. That window was never locked. I see. You uh, didn't hear a shot last night? Mm, no, sir. Well, isn't that rather remarkable? My room is some distance away, along a passage through a bay's door. Wasn't that rather awkward in case your master wished to summon you? No, no, sir. He had a bell that rang in my room. A very shrill bell, sir. Did you not hear anything? Uh, Sergeant Cadwallader speaking. Oh, yes, indeed. Uh, it's Norwich, sir. Oh, thank you, Sergeant. Uh, excuse me a moment, Mr. Angel. Uh, by all means. That you, Emerson? Will that be Thomas all? here? Oh, no, if you wouldn't mind hanging on, I'm sure the inspector... Got it, right. Questions. Very well. Yes? Calgary? Yes? The aunt? Uh, when did she die? Oh, two months ago. Yes, I see. Uh, Sergeant. Uh, 1834th Street, Calgary. Thank you. 1834... Violence, sort of fellow? Yes, you're sending it along. Yes, well, uh, thank you, Edmondson. All right, thanks. Well, we've got some of the dope on McGregor. It seems that uh, when his wife died, he travelled back from Canada to leave the child with an aunt of his wife's who lived in North Warsham because he'd got a job in Alaska and couldn't take the boy. Mm -hmm. Apparently, he was terribly cut up at the boy's death and went about swearing revenge on Warwick. Well, that's not uncommon after one of these accidents. Anyway, he went off back to Canada. They've got his address, and they'll send off a cable to Calgary. The aunt he was going to leave the child with died about two months ago. Uh, you were there at the time, I suppose, Angel. A motor accident in North Warsham, running over a boy. Oh, yes, I remember it quite well. Had uh, Mr. Warwick been drinking? I believe he had had a glass of sherry, sir. Ah. Well, I uh, think that'll do for now. Thank you, sir. Oh, by the way, uh, were there any visitors to the house yesterday? Yesterday evening in particular? Not that I can recall at the moment. Well, uh, I give you a help, Mr. Angel. We have been here so long. 
Uh, if you ask me, that fellow's a nasty bit of goods. Nothing you can put your finger on, mind. I don't like him. I quite agree. I wonder if he knows something he hasn't told us about last night. What's this? Tis misty in November, but seldom in December. Keats? No. Cadwallader. I might have guessed. Inspector, <laughs> Mrs Warwick is very anxious to see you. She's fussing a little. I mean Mrs Warwick Senior, Richard's mother. Oh, certainly. Ask her to come in, Miss Bennet. It's all right, Mrs Warwick. You can go in now. Yes, thank you, Bennet. Good morning, madam. Tell me, Inspector, what progress are you making? Oh, it's rather early to say that, but uh, you can rest assured we're doing everything we can. This man, McGregor, has he been seen locally, noticed? Inquiries have gone out about that. So far, there's been no record of a stranger. That poor little boy. The one Richard ran over, I mean. I suppose it unhinged the man's brain, but after two years, it seems incredible. Yes, it does seem a long time to wait. But he was a Scot, of course, a MacGregor, and patient, dogged people, the Scots. Oh, that's quite true. <clears throat> Your son uh, had no preliminary warning, no threatening letter, anything of that kind? No, I'm sure he hadn't. Richard would have said so. He would have laughed about it. And uh, after the accident, did your son offer any compensation to the father? Naturally. Richard was not a mean man. But it was refused, indignantly refused, I may say. Quite so. I understand MacGregor's wife was dead. The boy was all he had in the world. It's a tragedy. But not your son's fault. I said not your son's fault. I heard you. Perhaps you don't agree. Richard drank too much. And, of course, he'd been drinking that day. A glass of sherry? <laughs> A glass of sherry. He'd been drinking pretty heavily. He did drink very heavily. So you think that your son was to blame for the accident? Well, of course he was. He, I've never had the least doubt of it. But he was exonerated. The Warburton woman. Oh, she was a fool and devoted to Richard. I expect he paid her pretty handsomely, too. Do you know that? I don't know anything. I arrive at my own conclusions. Now, I'm is... telling you all this now, Inspector, because what you want is the truth, isn't it? You want to be sure there's a sufficient incentive for murder. Well, in my opinion, there was. Only I, I didn't think that after all this time... You didn't hear anything last night? I'm a little deaf, you know. I didn't know anything until I heard people talking and passing my door. I came down and Jan said... Richard's been shot. Richard's been shot. Jan is your younger son. Not my son. Oh? No, I divorced my husband many years ago. He remarried. Jan is the son of the second marriage. When my husband died, the boy came here. Laura has always been very kind to him. Yes, yes. Now, about your son Richard... I loved my son, Inspector. But I was not blind to his faults. And was very largely due to the accident which crippled him. Quite... Was his uh, married life happy? I haven't the least idea. Oh. Is there anything else you wish to know, Inspector? No, no, thank you, Mrs. Warwick. Uh, I should like to talk to Miss Bennet now, if I may. Yes, she is the person who can help you most. She's so practical and efficient. Has she been with you a long time? Oh, yes, for years. She looked after Jan when he was little. She helped with Richard, too. She looked after all of us. Very faithful person, Benny. Ah, good. Well, thank you, Mrs. Warwick. Uh, would you mind showing him Miss Bennet now? Oh, yes. Very well, Inspector. Uh, drinking, Anna. Well, I've heard that said of him. And all those pistols and air guns and rifles. Oh, little queer in the head, if you ask me. Uh, could be, could be. Yes. Hmm? You want to ask me some questions? I've got a good deal to do this morning. Oh, yes, Miss Bennet. I just wanted to hear your account of the car accident with the child in Norfolk. Well... Did it happen because Mr. Warwick had been drinking? Oh, I suppose his mother told you that. Well, you mustn't go by all she says. She's got a prejudice against drink. Richard's father drank. You think, then, that Richard Warwick's account was true? I don't see why it shouldn't have been the truth. Nurse Warburton corroborated him. And her word was to be relied upon? I should hope so. People don't go around telling lies about that sort of thing, do they? Oh, don't they, indeed. The way they talk sometimes, you'd think that not only were they within the speed limit, but that they'd got into reverse at the time. <laughs> Thank you, Sergeant. What I am getting at is this, Miss Bennet. In the grief and stress of the moment, a man might easily threaten revenge for an accident that had killed his child. But on reflection, if things were as stated, he would surely have realised that the accident was not Richard Warwick's fault. 
Oh, yes. I see what you mean. But if, on the other hand, there had been furious driving, if the car had been out of control... Did Laura tell you that? What makes you think she told me? I don't know. I just wondered. Is that all? I'm very busy this morning. Oh, yes, I'm sure. I, uh, I'd like to have a word with Jan next, if I may. Why can't you find this man McGregor and question him? He can't have got far. Oh, we'll find him, don't you worry. I hope you will. Revenge. It's not Christian. Oh, especially when the accident was not Mr Warwick's fault and could not have been avoided, hmm? Exactly. I'd like to speak to Jan, please. Sergeant? Oh, at once, sir. You're not to worry him. He's very easily unsettled. He gets excited, temperamental. Oh, you needn't worry, Miss Bennett, I assure you. We quite understand the position. Do you want me? Have you caught him yet? Will there be blood on his clothes? Uh, Jan, you must behave yourself. Just answer what you're asked. Oh, yes, I will. But can't I ask any questions? Of course you can ask questions. <coughs> Thank you, Miss Bennett. Oh, all right. All right, I'm going. How oh, then, Jan Bach? I don't suppose you've ever been in close contact with a murder before? No, I haven't. It's very exciting, isn't it? H have you got any clues? Fingerprints or bloodstains? Oh, you seem very interested in blood. Oh, I am. I like blood. Oh. Richard shot things, you know, and then they used to bleed. <laughs> it's really very funny, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's funny that Richard, who was always shooting things, should have been shot himself. <laughs> don't you think that's funny? <laughs> Yes, I uh, suppose it does have its humorous side. You very upset that your brother's dead? Upset? That Richard is dead? No. Why should I be? I thought perhaps you were very fond of him. Fond of him? Fond of Richard? Oh, no. Nobody could be fond of Richard. I suppose his wife was fond of him. Laura? No, I don't think so. She was always on my side. On your side? Yes. Yes. When Richard wanted me sent away. Sent away? To one of those places. You know, where they send you and you're locked up and you can't get out. Oh. I wouldn't like to be locked up. I'd hate to be locked up. <laughs> but nobody can lock me up now, can they? I shouldn't say so. <laughs> Not now that Richard's dead. <laughs> Hello, Laura. Am I interrupting? No, 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 of course not, Mrs. Warwick. Is, uh, is Jan... I was about to ask him if he remembers anything about that accident to the boy in Norfolk, the McGregor boy. Do you remember, Jan? Of course I remember. I remember everything. And uh, what do you know about the accident, Mrs. Warwick? Was it discussed at luncheon that day after the inquest? I don't remember. Oh, yes, Laura. Richard said... One brat, more or less in the world, didn't make any difference. Please. It's uh, quite all right, Mrs. Warwick. It is important, you know, that we get at the truth of that accident. If I had an enemy, that's what I'd do. Wait a long time, and then I'd come creeping along in the dark with my gun, and then... Bang, bang, bang! Be quiet, Jan. Oh, Laura, are you angry with me? No, darling, I'm not angry, but don't get excited. I'm not excited. Uh, who's there? Oh, sounds like Mr. Starkweather. <clears throat> Look here, I can't spend all day kicking my heels in the police station. I've got things to do. I've got two appointments with a house agent today. Oh, uh, good morning, Mrs. Warwick. I'm so sorry. Good morning. Uh, Mr. Starkweather, mm -hmm. last night, did you lay your hand on this table and subsequently push the window open? Don't know. May have done, can't remember. Oh, I beg your pardon, sir. Here are Mr. Starkwood's prints, sir. The constable brought them, and the ballistics report. Ah, oh, good, good. Uh, let's see. Oh, the bullet that killed Richard Warwick definitely came from this gun. As to the fingerprints, we'll soon see. Uh, Sergeant? You've just come back from Aberdan, haven't you? What's Aberdan like? Hot. Oh. How are you today, Mrs. Warwick? Feeling better? Oh, yes, thank you. I've got over the shock now. Good. Well, this seems to settle it. They're not your prints. Huh? What's that? Your prints are on the window, decanter, glass and cigarette lighter. The prints on the table are not yours. Oh, that settles it then. Since there were no visitors here last night? No. They must be McGregor's. McGregor's? You sound surprised. Yes, I am rather. I mean, I should have expected him to have worn gloves. He handled a revolver with gloves. And was there any quarrel, Mrs. Warwick? 
Or was nothing heard but the shot? Uh, I, um, we, uh, Benny and I, we, we just heard the shot. Julian! Julian! Laura, I've just heard... Oh, I, I'm most terribly sorry. Oh, good morning, Major Farrow. This is an extraordinary business. Poor Richard. It is exciting, isn't it? Huh? Yes, yes, of course it's exciting. Oh, Major, this is uh, Mr Starkweather, Major Farrer, who may be our next Member of Parliament. He's contesting the by-election. How do you do? How do you do? Mr Starkweather actually saw the murderer leaving last night. Yes, I'd run my car into a ditch. I was coming up to the house to see if I could telephone and get some help. But which way did this man go? No idea. Vanished into the mist like a conjuring trick. You told Richard someone would shoot him one day, didn't you, Julian? Did I? Uh, I don't remember. Oh, yes, you did. At dinner. You know, you and Richard were having a sort of argument. You said, one of these days, Richard, somebody will put a bullet through your head. A remarkable prophecy. Oh, well, Richard and his guns were a pretty fair nuisance value, you know. Uh, People didn't like it. Uh, Yes. Hmm. Well, I I wish I'd come over here last night. I meant to. But that awful fog, you couldn't come out in that. No, I had my committee members over to dine with me. Uh, has anyone got a match? I seem to have uh, mislaid my lighter. Ah, here we are. Oh, uh, there it is. Uh, couldn't imagine where I'd left uh, it. Julian. Yes, I, I'm most awfully sorry about all this, Laura. If there's anything I can do... Yes, yes, I know. Do you mind if I smoke too? Of course not. Mind if I borrow your lighter, Major Farrow? Of course not. Here it is. Ah. Hmm. Nice lighter, this. Yes, it works better than most. Rather distinctive. Thank you. Richard has lots of guns and air guns. Would you like to see them, Inspector? They're in Richard's bedroom through there. Oh, all right, you show them to us. You know you're helping us, helping us a lot. Yeah, we ought to take you in the force. Yes, yes indeed. <laughs> oh, uh, we don't need to keep you, Mr. Starkweather. You can get about your business now. Keep in touch with us, that's all. All right. Well, I must go and see whether they've got my car out of the ditch yet. We didn't seem to pass it on the way here. No, the drive comes up from the other road. How different things look in daylight. Julian, that lighter, I said it was mine. To the inspector? No, to him. To to this fellow? Oh, Laura. Be careful, he may be listening to us. Who is he? You know him? No, no, I don't know him. He had an accident with his car and he came here last night. Just after... It's all right, Laura. You know that I'll do everything I can. Julian, fingerprints. What fingerprints? On that table. On hmm? that table there and on the pane of glass. Are they yours? Think. On the table? Yes, they might have been. Oh, God, what shall we do? The police think it's this man, McGregor. Oh, well, that's all right, then. They'll probably go on thinking so. But suppose... I must go. I've got an appointment. But it's it's I... just all right, Laura. Don't worry. I'll see you're all right. Oh, you off now? Yes. Things are rather busy these days. Election coming on, you know, in a week's time. Oh, I see. Excuse my ignorance, but what are you? Tory? Hmm? I'm a liberal. Oh. Are they still at it? They are indeed at it. Goodbye, Laura. I see. I'm beginning to see. What do you mean? That's the boyfriend, is it? Come on, now. Is it? Since you ask, yes. There are quite a few things you didn't tell me last night, are there? That's why you snatched up his lighter in such a hurry and said it was yours. And how long has it been going on between you and him? Some time now. But you didn't go away together? No. There's his career, for one thing. It might ruin him politically. Oh, surely not these days. Don't they all take adultery in their stride? These would have been special circumstances. He was a friend of Richard's and... With Richard being a cripple. Oh, I see. Not good publicity. Do you want to try a little experiment? Where were you standing when you shot Richard? Mm -hmm. Oh, by the window. Go and stand where you were standing. I I can't remember. I was upset. Your husband said something to you. You snatched up the gun. Come on, pick it up. Pick it up. That's right. Now, you snatched it up and you shot him. Show me how you did it. Uh, Go on, shoot. It isn't loaded. I thought so. You've never fired a revolver in your life. Look, you don't even know enough to release a safety catch. 
You didn't shoot your husband. I did. No, no, you didn't. Well, then why should I say I did? Because it was Julian Farrow who shot him. No. Yes. If it was Julian, why on earth should I say I did it? Because you thought, and thought quite rightly, that I'd cover up for you. But I'm damned if I'm going to tell a pack of lies to save Major Julian Farrow's skin. Oh, yes, you are. You'll have to. You can't back out now. You've told your story to the police. You can't change it. What? Whatever you know or think, you've got to stick to your story. You're an accessory after the fact. You said so yourself. Well, I'm damned. You little bitch. Oh, I'm sorry I've kept you waiting, Julian. Why do you send for me, Laura? I've been expecting you all day. I've been up to my ears ever since this morning. And in any case, don't you see, Laura, that it's much better we shouldn't meet? There are things we've got to discuss. Do you know that Angel is setting out to blackmail me? Angel is? Yes. He obviously knows about us, and he knows, or pretends to know, that I was here last night. Oh, God, how awful. What are we going to do? We'll have to think. Think carefully. Either bluff it out, say he's lying, that I never left home yesterday evening, and uh, then... But there are the fingerprints. What fingerprints? You've forgotten the fingerprints on the table. The oh. police have been thinking that they're McGregor's, but if, if Angel goes to them with his story, they'll ask to take your fingerprints, and then... Yes, 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 I see. All right, then. I'll have to admit that I came over here and uh, tell some story. Yes, I came over to see Richard about something, and we talked... You can some... say he was perfectly all right when you left him. Oh, how easy you make it sound. One has to say something. <sighs> What on earth made you think of cooking up that paper and putting it on Richard's body? Aren't you taking a terrific chance? Yes. No, I, I don't know. Oh, so damn cold-blooded. He had to think of something. I couldn't think. It was really Michael's idea. Michael? Michael. Starkweather. You mean he helped you? Yes, yes, yes. That's why I wanted to see you, to explain to you. What's Michael Starkweather doing in all this? He came in and, and found me in the study. I'd got the gun in my hand. Oh, and... God. And somehow you persuaded him to... I think he persuaded me. Oh, Julian. Now, uh, look, I've told you. I'll do anything I can. Don't think I won't, but... You've changed. I can't feel the same. After what's happened, I can't feel the same. I can. At least I think I can. No matter what you've done, I'd always oh. feel the same. All the same, Laura... Murders. I shall try never to think of it. And it wasn't premeditated, Julian. It was just an impulse. No need to go back over it all. We've got to think now what we've got to do. I know. If it comes to it, Laura, I'll take the blame. I don't want you to. I don't want you to. You mustn't think that I don't understand how it happened. You picked up the gun, shot him without really knowing what you were doing, and then... Are you trying to make me say I killed him? Not at all. I've told you. I'm prepared to take the blame if it comes to it. But you said... Listen. You knew how it happened. I don't think you did it deliberately. I know quite well that you only shot him because... I shot him? Are you really pretending to believe that I shot oh, him? Oh, for God's sake, let's be honest with each other. I didn't shoot him and you know it. Well, then who did? Laura, are you trying to say that I shot him? I heard the shot. And your footsteps on the path going away. I came down and there he was, dead. I didn't shoot him. I came over here to see him, to tell him that after the election we'd got to come to some arrangement about a divorce. I heard a shot just before I got here. I just thought it was Richard up to his tricks as usual. I came into the study, and there he was, dead. I don't understand. It could have been suicide. No, because Laura. there would have been... Laura! Now Richard's dead. His pistols and guns belong to me, don't they? I mean, I'm his brother. I'm the next man in the family. Now, Jan. Benny won't let me have them. She treats me like a child, but I'm not a child. I'm a man. Thirteen, nearly. I'm going to do what Richard did. I'm going to shoot squirrels and birds and cats. <laughs> I might shoot people if I don't like them. <laughs> Listen, Jan, darling, it's a, it's a very worrying time for all of us. And Richard's things don't belong to anybody until the lawyers have come and read his will and granted what they call probate. Until then, we all have to wait and see. Do you understand? I understand what you tell me, Laura. I love you, Laura. I love you very much. Yes, dear, I love you. You're glad Richard's dead, aren't you? No, I'm not glad. Oh, yes, you are. 
Now you can marry Julian. Yeah? Oh, silly old Benny. Now do be nice to Benny. She's having such a lot of trouble and worry over all this. You must help her, Jan. You're the man of the family now. All right, all right. For your sake, Laura. Benny? Benny? I've no idea he knew about us. Hmm. There's a trouble with people like Jan. They never know how much or how little they do know. He is a... He gets rather easily out of hand, doesn't he? He gets easily excited, yes. But now that Richard isn't here to tease him, he'll calm down. Good afternoon. Oh. Good afternoon. Ah, oh, how's everything? Bright and cheerful? I see. Two's company and three's none. Oh, please don't. As a matter of fact, I've come for two reasons. First, to say goodbye. My character's been cleared. High-level cables from Abadan saying what a fine, upright fellow I am. So... I'm free to depart. Oh, I'm sorry you're going so soon. That's nice of you, considering the way I butted into your family murder. But I came in by the garden for another reason. The police brought me up in their car. And although they're being very tight-lipped about it, it's my belief there's something up. They're in the study now. Doubtless you'll hear all about it. Shall we join them? understand that you have further questions to ask us, Inspector Thomas? Yes, Mrs. Warwick. You still have no news of this man, McGregor? On the contrary. He's been found? Yes. Oh, oh, oh really? Oh, you've arrested him? That would be impossible, Miss Bennet. Impossible? Why? Because he's dead. Was he dead? John McGregor died in Alaska over two years ago, not very long after he returned to Canada from England. Dead? Oh, that makes a difference, doesn't it? It wasn't John McGregor who put that revenge note on the dead body of Mr. Warwick. But it's clear, isn't it, that it was put there by someone who knew all about McGregor and the accident in Norfolk, which ties it in very definitely with someone in this house. No. It could have been... It could have been... Yes, Miss Bennett? Nothing. Uh, before you get busy with uh, routine, Inspector, there's something I must mention... Mrs. Warwick has just told me that there are some fingerprints you're anxious to identify. On the, this table, I think you said. In all probability, Inspector, they're mine. You were over here last night, Major Farrow? Yes. I came over, as I often do after dinner, to have a chat with Richard. And you found him very moody and depressed, so I didn't stay long. What time was this, Major Farrow? Uh, I really can't remember. Ten, ten-thirty, thereabouts. There was no quarrel, hard words? Certainly not. Uh, excuse me, Inspector. I'm late. I've got to take the chair at the town hall, if you don't mind. Ah, yes, yes, of course. Mustn't keep the town hall waiting. Uh, but I'm sure you'll understand, Major Farrow, that I should like a full statement from you of your movements last night. Tomorrow morning, perhaps? I understand. Perfectly. Shall we say uh, ten o'clock tomorrow morning? And uh, my solicitor will be present. <clears throat> So, Mrs. Warwick, did you see Major Farrow when he came here last night? Uh, I... I don't think Mrs. Warwick feels like answering any questions just now. Indeed, Mr. Starkweather. And what business is it of yours? Mr. Starkweather is quite right. I don't want to answer any questions. Very well. Then, uh, then I shall come back later. Oh. But I must speak. Tell them. Mr. Starkwood is right, Laura. The less you say now, the better. We must get in touch with Mr. Adams at once. Mr. Adams? Our solicitor. Yes. Ring him up now, Benny. Use the extension upstairs. Right. Laura, go with her. I want to talk to Mr. Starkwood. Yes, but... Now, don't worry, my dear. Come along, Laura. Uh, Mr. Adams will help us to sort things out, my dear. I don't know how much time we have. I want you to help me, Mr. Starkwood. No, there are two people who definitely could not have shot my son, his wife and Miss Bennett. They were actually together when the shot was fired. Right. But though Laura couldn't have shot her husband, she could have known who did. Accessory before the fact? She and Julian Farrer in it together, is that what you mean? It's not what I mean. Julian Farrer didn't shoot my son. How can you possibly know that? I do know it. I'm going to tell you, a stranger, what none of my family knows. Mm -hmm. I am a woman who has not very long to live. 
I'm sorry. I loved my son very dearly, Mr. Starkweather. He had many fine qualities. But because he'd been hurt himself, he had an enormous desire to hurt others. So others began to suffer because of him. Do you understand me? I think so, yes. No, I'm... I'm very fond of my daughter-in-law. I don't know whether she was ever really in love with Richard, but I tell you this. She did everything a wife could do to make his illness and inaction bearable. But he would have none of her help. He rejected it. I think at times he hated her. So when I tell you that the inevitable happened, I think you'll understand what I mean. Laura fell in love with another man, and he with her. So? So, there came a time when it seemed that only one thing would solve all the difficulties. Richard's death. And so, conveniently, Richard died? Yes. Excuse me putting this bluntly, Mrs. Warwick, but are you confessing to murder? I'm not confessing to anything. I'm merely putting before you a certain point of view. An emergency might arise when I was no longer here to deal with it. And in the event of such a thing happening, I want you to take this. You see to whom it is addressed? The Chief Constable, yes, but I'm not at all clear what's really in your mind. Either you committed this murder yourself, or you know who did commit it. That's right, isn't it? I don't propose to discuss the matter. Thank you for listening, Mr. Starkweather. You've been very kind. Well, I'm damned. What a woman. Where's the inspector? Hmm? Michael, you must listen to me. Julian didn't kill Richard. Indeed. Did he tell you so? You don't believe me, but it's true. You see... He thought I'd killed Richard. That's not exactly surprising. I thought so too, didn't I? But he couldn't take it. It made him feel... <sighs> differently towards me. Whereas when you thought he'd killed Richard, you took it in your stride without turning a hair. Women are wonderful. <laughs> what made Julian come out with the damaging fact that he was here last night? Don't tell me it was simple love of truth. It was Angel. Hmm? He saw, or says he saw, Julian here. Ah, I thought I got a whiff of blackmail. Not a nice fellow, Angel. He says he saw Julian just after the shot was fired. Oh, I'm frightened. It's all closing in. I'm frightened. Mr. Starkweather, mm. Laura, go next door with the inspector. Oh, oh, yes, if you will. Well. Uh, quickly. Now, come in, Jan. Don't tease me any more. Come in. Come in. Benny? How did you get hold of that? Thought you were so clever, didn't you, Benny? Looking up all Richard's guns in the cupboard. But I found a key. I've got a gun now, just like Richard. I'm going to shoot things. Jan, please. Be careful, Benny. I might shoot you. Oh, you wouldn't do a thing like that. Jan, I know you wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. It's not as though you were just a careless boy. You're a man now, aren't you? Yes, I'm a man. Now Richard's dead, I'm the only man in the house. That's why I know you wouldn't shoot me. You only shoot an enemy. That's right. But you like killing things, don't you, Jan? It's exciting to kill things. You didn't want Richard to have you sent away, did you? He said he would. He was a beast. You said to him once that you'd kill him if he was going to send you away. Did I? But you didn't kill him. Who says so? Perhaps I did. Oh, no. It wouldn't be you. You're only a boy. You wouldn't have dared. You think I wouldn't have dared? Is that what you think? Of course you wouldn't have dared to kill Richard. You'd have to be very brave and grown up to do that. You don't know everything, Benny. I'm much cleverer than you are. I know things you don't know. Have you got some big secret now? Big secret? Big secret? <laughs> You'd be frightened if you knew. Would I? Would I be frightened? <laughs> Nobody knows anything about me, really, all the things I can do. <laughs> silly old Richard, sitting there and shooting at silly old birds. He didn't think anyone would shoot him, did he? No, that was his mistake. <laughs> yes, that was his mistake. He thought he could send me away, didn't he? I showed him. Did you? How did you show him? Can't tell you. Perhaps I can guess what you did, but I won't say... It'll be just your secret, won't it? Yes, it's my secret. 
Nobody knows what I'm like. I'm dangerous. Richard didn't know how dangerous you were. He must have been surprised. He was. He was surprised. His face went all silly. And then... And then his, his, his head dropped down when it was done. And there was blood. And he didn't move anymore. I showed him. I showed him. He won't send me away now. Give me the gun, Jan. Oh, no, you don't. Nobody's going to take my gun away from me. If the police come and try and arrest me, I shall shoot them. Oh, there's no need to do that. No need at all. You're clever. You're so clever that they will never suspect. Silly old police! Silly old police! Silly old Richard! After him, Sergeant, quick. Richard. Come on, then, John. Come on. There, there, Miss Bennett. You mustn't take on so. You did very well. Oh, I've known all along. You see, I know better what Jan is like than anyone else. And I knew Richard was driving him too far. And, and I knew... I've known for some time that Jan was getting dangerous. Jan... Oh, no, 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 not Jan. I can't believe it. How could you, Benny? How could you? I thought at least you would be loyal. There are times when truth is more important than loyalty. Oh. You didn't see, any of you, what was happening. He's a dear boy, a sweet boy, but... but when they get above a certain age, then they get dangerous. <laughs> I think I can take it upon myself to say that he'll be treated with humanity and consideration. Oh. It'll mean detention, but in comfortable surroundings. And that, you know, is what it would have come to soon in any case. Yes, yes, you're, you're right. I'm sorry, Benny. You said that nobody knew he was dangerous. I knew, but I couldn't bring myself to do anything about it. Somebody had to do something. Sir! What's happened, man? It's, it's terrible what I've got to tell you. Oh, God, man, your hand. He shot at me up there on the edge of the spinney. Oh. Shot at me oh. twice, and the second time when he got me in the hand. I tried to get the gun away from him, but, well, I was hampered, you see, with my hand. Yes, yes, what happened? And his finger was on the trigger, and it went off. He's shot through the heart. He's dead. Oh. <laughs> Where is he? I'll, I'll come with you and show you. No, 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 you better stay here. No, no, I'm all right now. I'll do all right till we get back. Come on. I'm more sorry than I can say, but... Perhaps it's all for the best. Yes. Yes, it is for the best. He's out of it now, poor boy. Oh, come, my dear, come. This has been too much for you. Oh, dear. I, I think I'll go and lie down. I think you'd better have this envelope back, Mrs Warwick. Oh, yes. There's no need for that now. Oh, may I say how sorry I am, madam? If there is anything I We shall need that... no more help from you, Angel. You shall have a cheque for your wages, and I should like you out of the house today. Very well, madam. Thank you, madam. No prosecution for blackmail? No. Pity. Well, I suppose I'd better be going. I'll say goodbye. Don't be too upset. I am upset. Because you love the boy? Yes. And because it's my fault. You see, Richard was right. He should have been sent away somewhere, shut up where he couldn't do any harm. It was I who wouldn't have that. So really it was my fault that Richard was killed. Come on, Laura, don't let's sentimentalise. Richard was killed because he asked for it. What you've got to do now is to be happy ever after, as the story say. <laughs> With Julian? I wonder. You see, it isn't the same now. Between Farrer and you? Yes. Ever since... you know. <laughs> Men are rarely the sensitive sex. Women are tough. If a man's committed a murder for a woman, it probably enhances his value in her eyes. A man feels differently. You didn't feel that way. Hmm? When you thought I'd shot Richard, you helped me. Oh, that was different. I had to help you. Why did you have to help me? I still want to help you. Don't you see we're back where we started? In a way, it was I who killed Richard because... because of being so obstinate about Jan. That's what's eating you, really, isn't it? Finding out that it was Jan who shot Richard. But it needn't be true, you know. 
You needn't think it unless you like. How can you say such a thing? I heard, we all heard. He admitted it, he boasted oh, of yes, it. Oh, yes, 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 I know all about that. But how much do you know about the power of suggestion? Your Benny played him up very carefully, got him worked up, and the boy was suggestible. Benny dangled the bait in front of him and he took it. He'd shot Richard and he was a hero. But you don't know, none of us really know, whether what he said was true. But he shot at the sergeant. Oh, yes, he's a potential killer, all right. He's quite likely he shot Richard. But you can't say for sure he did. It might have been Benny or Mrs Warren, <sighs> or even your boyfriend Julian, afterwards pretending that he thought you'd done it, a clever move which took you in completely. You don't believe what you're saying. You're only trying to console My me. My dear girl, anyone might have shot Richard. Even McGregor. McGregor? But McGregor's dead. Of course he's dead. He'd have to be. Look here. I can put up a very pretty case for McGregor having been the killer. Say he decided to kill Richard as revenge. What does he do? Well, first thing is he has to get rid of his own personality. Well, it wouldn't be difficult to arrange for a death in some remote part of Alaska. Then he changes his name... And he starts building up a new personality for himself in some other country, some other job. Go on. He keeps tabs on what's going on over here. And when he knows that you've left Norfolk and come to this part of the world, he lays his plans. He shaves his beard, dyes his hair and all that sort of thing, of course. And then on a misty night, he comes here. Now, let's say it goes like this. Let's say McGregor says, I've got a gun. And so have you. I'll count three and we both fire. I've come to get you for the death of my boy. You know, I don't think your husband was quite the fine sporting fellow you think he was. I have an idea he mightn't have waited for three. You say he was a damn good shot, but this time he missed. And the bullet went out into the garden, where there are a good many other bullets. But McGregor doesn't miss. He shoots and kills. Drops his own gun by the body... Takes Richards, goes out of the window, and presently he comes back. Comes back? Why? Well, suppose he has an accident and can't get away from here. What can he do? Only one thing. Come up to the house and discover the body. You speak as though you know just what happened. Of course I know. Don't you understand? I'm McGregor. You? You? Goodbye. Laura. Wait. Wait, come back. Come back. Oh, Michael, come back. <laughs> <laughs>